Hi, I'm Dr. John Preston. I'm with Alliant International University in San Francisco, and I'd like to talk to you about the importance of always considering the possibility that there may be an underlying medical condition or use of drugs, either prescription drugs or substances of abuse underlying uh, causes for psychiatric symptoms of people who come to seek us for treatment. And oftentimes, if there's an underlying medical problem that is the cause of this, our patients don't know that. And when we ask them, why are you feeling depressed or anxious or other symptoms, they will oftentimes come up with a very plausible psychosocial explanation for that. I'd like to first start by mentioning to you one of my treatment failures. These are the kind of things you always learn from. And this is a man that I saw many years ago who came in following uh, the death of his wife two months earlier in a tragic car accident. And uh, he came in, he was uh, very anxious, he was weeping throughout the interview, quite sad, quite depressed. He had lost 12 pounds in two months, had significant uh, sleep disturbance, and uh, was suffering a lot. This man was aggressively treated with antidepressant medication. He uh, uh, went to a bereavement support group and was seen in weekly psychotherapy. Uh, but week after week there was little improvement. Now that should have been a cue to me, but it wasn't. And uh, Week 10, this man came in to see me, and he said, Dr. Preston, guess what now happened to me? I have thyroid disease. This guy had hyperthyroid. <clears throat> now, he had the bad luck of having a, a very significant, very, very painful psychological event occur about the same time that this thyroid condition uh, came into full blossom. And how I was stupid about this was uh, making the mistake of being single-minded, that is, thinking that there is you know, one cause for the symptoms, and in his case it was a combination of a medical condition and significant psychological stressors. When this guy was treated for his thyroid disease, the depression resolved completely. So, in, in the main part of this video, I want to talk to you about something that is becoming increasingly clear, and that is that many mood disorders are caused by an underlying thyroid condition. Now, my patient had hyperthyroid, which can cause anxiety or agitated depressions. But the majority of the people that have mood problems that are secondary to thyroid disease, it's hypothyroid. If we can have the first slide, please. This is the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. Ultimately, the brain and hypothalamus regulates thyroid levels in the bloodstream. And if there is a disease that affects the thyroid gland, and most of these are, are autoimmune diseases, as the thyroid gland becomes uh, impaired and begins to fail, then initially you'll see a drop of the release of T3 and T4, but this is responded to uh, right away. An adjustment is made at the level of hypothalamus and the pituitary, and there's an increased release of TSH, next slide please, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And thyroid stimulating hormone then drives the thyroid gland to produce more T3 and T4. In subclinical or more subtle cases of thyroid disease, then you will see on blood tests, normal T3 and T4, but TSH is elevated. Next slide, please. As the slide says, about 10% of people that have major depression, the underlying cause is hypothyroid. In some instances, in small percentage, this is grade one or primary hypothyroid. Most of the time, mental health practitioners don't need to be concerned about this so much because the disease is, is more severe is picked up in primary care settings and often treated very successfully. But what is seen commonly, and this is what underlies 9% of all people with major depression, is grade 2, sometimes called subclinical hypothyroid. And here we have more subtle thyroid disease, but as I mentioned before, uh, the TSH is elevated and that's how you diagnose this particular disease. The Normal range for TSH is between 0 0.3 and 3.0. We'll see this on the next slide, please. What's been found is that uh, elevations above this level in TSH in people that are genetically predisposed to thyroid disease uh, can cause depression, also can result in an inability for antidepressants or psychotherapy to effectively treat depression. But also, very importantly, and this is something a lot of primary care doctors are not aware of. Uh, don't mean to be critical primary care doctors, but this is kind of a nuance, but an important piece is that even slight elevations in TSH, and that is, for instance, an elevation 
of 2.5, which would be technically in the normal range and would be no problem for most individuals, uh, can be clinically significant. The slight elevations in TSH, that is anywhere uh, above 0. Point, excuse me, 1.3, uh, even though in the normal range can be a, a sign of underlying subtle thyroid disease which can cause depression in those individuals that are gen genetically predisposed to mood disorders. Also, remarkably, even these slight elevations in TSH can be responsible for a failure for antidepressant medications to work. In one of the largest scale studies, uh, the start -E program that was sponsored by the National Institute of Mental Health, one thing that was found that was actually quite a surprise was adding very, very low doses of thyroid supplementation uh, was effective in treating many otherwise treatment-resistant people uh, with depression. If I could have the last slide, please. Thyroid augmentation and the study, the START-E program, so people were taking an antidepressant but not getting better. These were, again, people that were treatment-resistant. And a large number of them were given very low doses of T3 and within four to eight weeks made a full recovery. So in closing, regardless of whether there are significant life stressors or not that may account for depression or other psychiatric symptoms, especially when you have mood disorders, it's always prudent to get a thyroid screening, in particular paying attention to TSH levels, because when this can be corrected, our outcomes in psychotherapy and psychopharmacology can be significantly improved. Okay, thank you very much.